Hey, I just want to let you know that this video is part of a larger course called Operating Systems 101 on CyberTrainingPro.com. So if you enjoy the content, you want to see the rest of the course, or you want to see other courses that we have or our career services, make sure to check out CyberTrainingPro.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're going to walk through how to join a system running Windows 11 into a Windows domain running on Windows Server 2022. Now there's a few dependencies that we have. First of all, you need a Windows Server 2022 installation, either a physical system or a virtual machine. You also need a system running Windows 11, again, a physical system or a virtual machine. You need administrator privileges on both the client system and the server, and you need the Active Directory domain created and running on your Windows server. If you don't know how to set up the virtual machines, make sure to go check out the videos on installing Windows as a virtual machine first before you watch this video. Okay, so first things first, I'm on the server here and I'm going to go to Tools and Active Directory Users and Computers. I just want to show you that we have nothing in the Computers folder here. So there are no computers that are joined to this domain currently. Now on our Windows 11 system, we're going to go ahead and open up the Start menu and we're going to type View Network Connections. And we'll go ahead and select that. And then you're going to find your network interface card here. We're going to right click on that and we're going to select properties. Now we're going to select IPv4 and then we're going to select properties again. Now one of the things that you have to do when you're setting this up is you have to tell your system which network it's going to be on and you have to actually give the DNS information for the DNS server or for the directory server. So back on our server, we're gonna open up a command prompt window here. It doesn't have to be an administrator level one, it can just be any command prompt window. And we're gonna type ipconfig. We need to know what the IP address is of our server. All right, so back on our Windows 11 computer, we're going to change this and we're gonna enter in our own IP address here. So 192, 168, 163, and 66, it really doesn't matter but it needs to be on that same network. And then the subnet mask, if you click in the box, it'll automatically generate it because it thinks that it's a class C address, which is great, that's fine. The default gateway, we're gonna put 192.168.163.1, that's typically what the default gateway is. And then the DNS server, this needs to be your domain controller or your server where Active Directory is installed. So we're going to put 192, 168, 163, and 133. For the alternate DNS server, you can put something else, such as Google server, so 8.8.8.8, and that's fine. But essentially what's going to happen is we're going to make calls to the DNS server, so the server that's running Active Directory, and that's how it will know where our domain is located. So we'll go ahead and hit OK on this and close. If you don't provide that DNS server for your domain controller, it's not gonna be able to find your domain when you go to add it. So it's really important that you do that. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. Now the first way we're gonna join this to the domain is gonna be manually. So we're gonna to go to the start menu and we're gonna type settings. And we'll select that. We're gonna scroll down to about and click on that. Now you're gonna have this option here that says domain or work group. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Now you have two different ways you can do this. You can use this wizard. We're not gonna do that in this video, but we're gonna click on change and add it to the domain from there. So we'll click change. You can see it's in a work group, so it's not in any domain. And we're gonna select domain. Now in here, if you remember back to our video when we were setting this up initially, we use demo.lab and that's what's on our server for our domain. If you set it up a different way or use something else, then of course you would wanna use that in here, but that's what we use, so that's what we're gonna put in here. And we're gonna hit okay. Now we get this pop-up window that's asking us for administrator level privileges on the domain. So not on the local system, on the domain. So we're gonna type demo slash administrator and then we're gonna enter our password. And we'll hit OK. And now we've successfully joined it to the domain. It is going to make us restart this 
to take effect. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll hit OK again. And we'll close this. And we'll select Restart Now. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Okay, once your system is restarted, remember it's joined to the domain, so we don't want to use that local account anymore. So we're going to select other user and we're going to enter in the same credentials because that's just the username that we're going to use. If you had another account, then you could totally use that in here. But again, because we have the administrator account set up, that's the only account we have set up right now. That's what we're going to use. We'll hit return. Just like when we're first setting this up, this is a new account as far as this computer is concerned. So it wants to go ahead and set everything up like it needs to. Okay, so at this point, this system is connected to the domain. If we go back to our server and we go to tools and then Active Directory Users and Computers, now we can see that our system is successfully added into our domain. Now let's say for whatever reason, you wanna remove this system from the domain. Okay, no problem, it's pretty easy. We'll go to the Start menu. We'll go to Settings again. We'll go to About. And we'll go to Domain or Workgroup. Then we'll select Change. And you can see it's part of the domain right now. We're going to select Workgroup. And we're just going to call this Workgroup. We'll hit OK. And this is saying you're going to need the local administrator account now because you're leaving the domain. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK again to welcome us to the work group. And it needs to restart again, so we'll hit OK. Close and restart now. OK, now we're going to log back in with that local administrator account. Remember, that's because the system is no longer part of the domain, so we need to use that local account again. Since we've removed the system, now we don't have that centralized functionality that we typically have when we're controlling systems through a domain. If we go back to our server and we refresh our Active Directory list, you can see that it was in here, but it is not in the domain any longer. It has this kind of down arrow on it. So we can go ahead and delete that. Now let's say you want to add a system to the domain, but you want to use PowerShell. It's very easy to do that as well. We'll go to the Start menu, and we'll open up a PowerShell window. We want to run this as administrator. Select Yes. We need to provide our domain name, and we need to provide our domain administrator credential. So we're going to enter in our username here. Don't enter your password yet, hit return. And now it's gonna prompt us to enter in our password. Again, this is the password for the administrator account of the domain, not the local account. So we'll hit okay. Now this is saying this is gonna take effect when we restart our computer, just like when we did it manually. So there's two ways you can obviously restart your computer. You can go to the start menu and do it that way, or you can just type shutdown, slash r. The shutdown slash r command is going to go ahead and shut down the computer and then restart it. All right, again, we're going to go to other user. And you can see this says sign into demo, which is our domain. So we're going to use the domain credentials again. And now the system is rejoined to the domain again. If we go back to our server and we look in Active Directory Users and Computers, 
and we refresh, we're gonna see that computer is back in there again. Now, one other important thing that I wanna show you, and it's kind of a trick, is if you go ahead and you sign out, and we select other user. Now you can see that this is showing that it's gonna log into our domain. If we do dot slash, that's gonna to change to a local user account. So if you ever had to use that local administrator account again, you can do the dot slash and then type in your administrator credentials. And then you can still log in with it. So now we're signed in as that local administrator account and not the domain account. Now, if you had any users that had local accounts, typically once you're gonna join it to the domain, you wanna disable those accounts and prevent people from logging into those accounts. Even with a local administrator account, you wanna put more restrictions in place because you don't want people to normally log in there, even if it's your administrators. You want them to use their domain credentials.